day you had a man who felt such conviction about his community that pondered about what was going on in this community and irrespective of how he went about it, did something, he acted, which many Americans, which many people are afraid to do, especially the people who are from said community, who have been the biggest loud mouth race baiters this whole, over this whole ordeal. You see, I, I think that the people who've been saying all this about George Zimmerman, the groups of people, predominantly African Americans, I think there's a breakdown in values within the African, so-called African American community. This week, Detroit 300, the well-known crime-fighting community organization, announced its plans to hunt down the killers of children in the city of Detroit. In the wake of the recent murder of nine-month-old Delrick Miller IV, the group intends to target local hotspots where area gangs hang out. They don't understand law. They don't understand what it's like to go out there and, and take charge. Many in the so-called African-American community live by this no-snitch code. This week, Detroit 300, the well-known crime-fighting community organization, announced its plans to hunt down the killers of children in the city of Detroit. In the wake of the recent murder of nine-month-old Delrick Miller IV, the group intends to target local hotspots where area gangs hang out. They don't understand law. They don't understand what it's like to go out there and, and take charge. Many in the so-called African-American community live by this. Uh oh, it seems like I'm going to have to open up another letter on painless. <sighs> I, I, I knew when the, the, the case was going to be over, there's some going to be some Uncle Ruckus is that's going to turn around and start cheerleading for George Zimmerman and and Painless. <laughs> I knew Painless was going to be one of them. But the uh, only good thing I can say about this is that at least we don't have to hear uh, Painless make any more uh, Trayvon Martin Zimmerman videos. I'm like this dude made about 150 videos like he like he know like he known the case like he was there when it happened like he was a resident of Sanford, Florida. And he's going to talk about how black people don't know the law. No, you don't know the law, motherfucker! You know, I'm tired of painless with this eagle-eyed view of the black community. I'm like, this guy got no credentials. Painless, you are a liar. And you're giving out misinformation. But I know it's for, it's for your Uncle Ruckus. No, it's for your fan base. It's for your hooting, hollering white boys. You know what I'm saying? You're Larry the Cable Guy, white boys, living in shotgun houses with an American flag in the front yard, a plastic pool in the backyard, and they come to your page and they give you all this, this ego boost. Talking about, oh, this guy is an American hero. He should be president instead of President Obama. He should, um, black people should follow him instead of Al Sharpton. And all that, rah, rah, rah. When everything's said and done, painless, them pecker boys will want to see you in that monkey cage the same way they want to see me in that monkey cage. And especially you, you know what I'm saying, with those ears and the way that your bottom lip protrudes like that. Yeah, you can call this an ad hominem attack, but I've seen you make all sorts of ad hominem attacks against the black community and black men. Like that video you, you talk about, um... Uh, where he says, so, Dear America, why there's so many loser black men right there in the midst of the Trayvon verdict? You know what I'm saying? You wanted George Zimmerman. You didn't even really want there to be just. You wanted George Zimmerman to get to get off so fucking bad. Talking about there's a breakdown in the black community. No, there's a breakdown in your face. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, look at yourself, man. I'm like, you, you look disgusting. And then you light your face a certain way because that's if you're, you're a self-conscious dark-skinned Negro, you try to lighten your face up a certain way so you seem lighter and your face don't seem all that bad. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at you. You got that cricket teeth down there. I'm like, I know, 
I'm not a perfect looking dude. I can stand to lose some weight, but you know, at least all my teeth are straight. And um, try to put noxzema on your skin, but look at you. Take care of yourself, man. All right, all right for somebody who, who sits in front of that camera 15, <laughs> 15 times a day, I would think you want to make yourself look somewhat presentable. You know, I'm like, I, I know if I seen you in, in natural light, I'll be horrified. I'll be completely mortified. I like some of you guys may say it's wrong for me to go in on painless like this, but think about my feelings. You know how hard it is for me to sit in front of a, to watch a painless video, especially when he, he has a voice like one of those Muppets, one of those puppets. <laughs> but painless going in, going back, get back on something. Painless talking about how the black community don't can't control its own destiny, that black men are too scared to take back their community. You said you said it. And I showed you that clip of the 300 black men that's in, and a couple of white dudes that, that are taking back the streets. I also seen this clip of the uh, these um, new Black Panthers that were, you know what I'm saying, they went to this crack house with a megaphone telling the drug dealers they had to get out. And all. These crackheads went running down the street. There was also this man in Georgia who put street lights, street lamps up down his, uh, on his street to detour crime at nighttime. So if you do just a minimal amount of research, you see all kind of black men doing stuff. Uh, I'm doing positive things for the community. But painless want to make the scene black people are just like these um, degenerates, you know, that, that don't do nothing, that are completely lazy. You know, that, that, are, that are, are afraid to, to snitch or shit like that, man. I'm like, I mean, you got the nation of Islam, I'm like, so, I, I, th that's why I said, man, you, you're giving out, you're, you're catering to your, to your white boy fan base, and you're not tell them, telling them the whole scoop, you know. I, now, I know that there's crime and corruptions in the black community, but this is America. America is a cesspool full of crime, <laughs> you know. Well, when's the last time you went to a Native American reservation? Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> And then, and then you say, talk about black people are the biggest race baiters of this, um, <laughs> of this whole ordeal, this whole trial. I'm like, come on, man. Race was thrown around by both parties. You know, what about that, that person that reprogrammed that, uh, ro that road construction sign saying Trayvon Martin is a nigger? Yeah, you remember that? I seriously doubt that was somebody driving down the street that knew how to reprogram that mainframe. I'm pretty sure it was the road construction workers who, um, themselves when they got off work they reprogrammed that sign to uh to make that uh statement that bold statement what about george zimmerman's brother who um who, who who tweeted that picture or whatever of that young uh black male who, who killed that kid in chicago or whatever that little rascal saying that ain't race baiting that ain't throwing race in the equation here saying that black that young black dudes are thugs or whatnot to try to uh, convince people to paint paint a broad stroke on Trayvon Martin. Come on, man. You are a fucking joke, man. And no wonder why your face is all fucked up like that. Um, and also, let me... Um, and, and then you, you talk about George Zimmerman like he's some kind of... Like G.I. Joe. Like George Zimmerman was a coward. This dude couldn't even make it as a cop. He lost his job as a security guard. This guy couldn't hold on to a security guard job. You know what I mean? A rent a cop. I like this guy was. If he had a job, a real job, he probably wouldn't be a neighborhood watchman. Talk about he stepped up and he did. Oh, like George Zimmerman profiled somebody. He made a horrible mistake. And then this motherfucker went into hiding. And then ate a bunch of food and got fat. I'm like, that, 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 that's your idea of American hero? Oh, let's go out here and profile some young black kid. Kill him. Aggravate the situation. Kill him. Said self-defense, go into hiding, ask for a bunch of fucking money, ask for a handout, you know what I'm saying, instead of paying your own trial, and then live inside a hotel and, and just fucking stuff your face with fucking rally uh, double bacon cheeseburgers and shit. That, that's your idea of American hero. You know who's an American hero? That's John White. You're not going to talk about the John White case, a black man who was protecting his family from three white hoodlums come, come, coming coming down his property in his driveway 
and he shot one of them and he got convicted of manslaughter. Manslaughter for defending himself on his own property. You're not going to say anything about that. You're not going to say anything about the John White case. Man, I, I got you all figured, figured out, man. I'm like, man, you talk crazier than a barrel full of cockeyed rattlesnakes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, emphasis on the word cockeyed, man. That, that, that's all I got to say about this. Situation's getting critical. Painless, step your game up, man, because you, you sound stupid.